we're now going to graph square roots. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to first show the pattern through point plotting, and then we'll talk about how we can get the pattern from that. So we're just going to let f of x equal the square root of x. And the first thing to recognize is that the domain is x is greater than or equal to 0, or 0 to infinity. So when I'm picking my x, I don't want to pick anything smaller than 0. So let's pick 0 to start. We know that the square root of x is 0. 1 is 1, 2 is the square root of 2, and uh-oh, I don't want to deal with the square root of 2. I'd much rather deal with perfect squares. So I'm going to skip some numbers. I'm going to skip to the perfect square 4. And then we'll go to 9 for 3, and we could go to 16 for 4. But we usually have enough by this point right here. So we get the points 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Oops, let's make sure we write it right. And that'll give us enough points. And so I also am not going to worry about graphing anything over here because my first point's at 0, 0. We go over to 1, 1. Then 4, 2. And 9, 3. And we get this parabola that's going like this. Let's draw that again just so we can pass through the points. And that's our parabola. But notice, if we ignore this one right here, that my y values are always increasing by 1. And that'll change a little bit, and I'll show that in a second. But for the most part, they always, well, they always change by the same amount if we just have a square root by itself. On this side, though, we're going to add 1, then 3, then 5, then 7 if we were to go there, and the next one would be 9, and I'm sure you can guess that the next one's going to be 11. So if we have this nice 1, 3, 5 pattern that we're going to use. Axes change as 1, then 3, then 5, and so on and so forth, but we don't need to do it anymore. So let's show this in practice. Suppose that I wanted to graph the square root of x minus 2. So the first question we ask ourselves is, what's our domain? Since it's even, we take the x minus 2, set that greater than or equal to 0. x is greater than or equal to 2. So 2 is our value, our starting value. And that's going to give us 2 minus 2 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. We're then going to add 1 to get to 3, which gives us 3 minus 2 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. We're then going to add 3 to get 6, square root of 6 minus 2 is square root of 4, which is 2. And then finally we're going to add 5 to get 11, 11 minus 2 is 9, 9, square root of 9 is 3. And so we get our same basic graph, but instead of starting at 0, 0, we start at 2, 0. Then we go over 1, up 1. And here's where the real kick is. If I go over 1 and then up 1, and then over 1, 2, 3, and up 1, then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1, I don't even need the, point pl the pl points being plotted anymore. There's 3 and 1, and there's 5 and 1. And so I can just move my cursor over and plot these dots, and it gives me my graph. And notice as well, that we shifted because it's inside over two spots. So our reference point is at 2, 0. And we'll talk about reference points again in a little while. Okay. Now let's look at a different graph. Suppose I let g of x equal the square root of x plus 3. Notice the plus 3 now is on the outside, so it's not going to affect our domain. Our domain is just the square root, so it's x is greater than or equal to 0. So our starting value would be, uh, let's, let's show this point plotting real quick. It starts at 0, and when we plug 0, we get 0, and then we add 3 to it. So we're at 0, 3. We then add 1 to get 1, and we add 1 to this side to get 4, because the square root of 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4. We add 3 to get 4, and we add 1 to get 5, then we add 5 to get 9, and we add 1 to get 6. And so our points are, we start up 3, there's our reference point at 0, 3, and then it's over 1, up 1, and then over 3, up 1, and over 
5 up 1 and we get this graph that looks like this. And so we, when we add on the outside or subtract, that's up and down. When we add or subtract on the inside, that's left and right. And it always is opposite of what you think. The minus 2 means it goes to a plus 2. This is when we add 2 to get to the other side. Okay, the last one I want to look at is 2 square roots of x. So we're going to double it after we figured out what it's supposed to be. So, our domain is still x is greater than or equal to 0, so we're going to start at 0 and get 0 because 2 times 0 is 0. We then add 1 and we get 2 because we get the square root of 1 times 2. So we're adding 2 here and adding 1 here. Then we'll add 3 to get 4, which we then double to get 4, or in other words, we add a 2 to it. We add 5 to get to 9. And just like we added 2 here and we added 2, if we add 2 here, we'll get 6, which is 3 times 2. So the number in front determines how fast we go up or down. That's the number we're going to add each time. And so, of course, we get our point at 0, 0, 1, 2, 4, 4, and 9, 6. And we get this extended graph that looks like it's been stretched.